This video will go over the steps to reload 5.56 ammunition cheap, fast, and easy. So the first step in the whole process is to go ahead and clean the brass that have actually been uh, chicken plucking up from all the different ranges I've been at. And I basically filled this uh, bowl up with some hot water and all the brass I have. And I'm going to put in just about a half teaspoon of a little bit of uh, Dawn dish washer soap and go ahead and just mix up the brass and go ahead and it'll release all the dirt and particulates that are inside the brass anything that's stuck on the outside and go ahead and clean it up so after I've done this for about probably about one minute I'm going to go ahead and rinse it out and then uh, continue to do a couple of rinses, probably about three or four rinses, uh, just to make sure there's no soap uh, or detergent left inside the cases, and I'm good to go. After that, I'm going to go ahead and dump them out inside of a pan and let them dry out. Now that I've rinsed all the brass out, I'm going to go ahead and dump it into a cookie sheet here. I line the cookie sheet up with a little bit of oil, uh, vegetable oil, just on the bottom, just to go ahead and protect it so it doesn't rust up a little bit. I'm just going to let this brass uh, dry out. I can either leave it out and let it dry, or I can go ahead and throw it in the oven. If I'm running a little low on time, and set it at about 250 degrees, 350 degrees, uh, run it for an hour, and that way it dries up all the brass nice and evenly, and I can go ahead and start reloading right away. So we've completed the step of rinsing and washing and, and drying the, uh, the brass out. And so we got all of our uh, 556 uh, brass right here mixed assortment and so the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, lubing these up uh, and also uh, once we lube them up we're going to resize and deprime them in the same step. So what we do is basically take some of our uh, Hornady uh, case lube product here and uh, I've uh, lubed a couple thousand rounds already and I've only used probably about uh, two teaspoons worth of this lube. It's pretty good stuff. So anyways, I basically take just a little bit of my fingertips, approximately that much, and I'm going to run it through the brass and just mix it around, and it should uh, get all the spaces. Uh, now that we've lubed up all the, the brass casings, uh, what we're going to basically be doing is uh, removing the primer out of here, which the, the pin does here, and then also uh, resizing the brass. And it's all done in the same step. All right, and we're using the uh, Lee 223 uh, dies here. So basically, raise the ram up, and as soon as I raise it up, it ejects out the primer and resizes the case. And so then here's our finished product that we have. And it's, so this finished product basically is what we now have is the uh, cleared out primer and then the resized brass. Okay, so now we're going to be cleaning up the brass and removing the lubricant from the actual brass casings. And what I'm going to be using for that is some brake cleaner, uh, just a quick little spray. And then I'm going to throw in some pieces of paper towel uh, that I've cut up here or just ripped apart. And then I'm going to toss them in there and start cleaning everything up. So I'm just going to give them a quick spray. And you don't want to do this in a ventilated area or uh, you're going to kill whatever brain cells you have. All right, the next step is to go ahead and trim the case length of the actual brass itself. So the actual brass, it has to be trimmed in total length uh, so that it can meet specifications and it can be loaded into a chamber, um, especially since it's been after it's been sized because the actual neck of the case is going to stretch out just a little bit. So what we're going to be doing is actually trimming them up and for what we have here is the uh, Lee uh, trimming set up here and basically we have this right here which is a, normally what it comes with you do it by hand uh, however I go ahead and add a little bit of power into it I put it in a half inch drill I go ahead and tighten it up and then I go ahead and you plunge it in it goes ahead and trims it to length you run a quick pass of your chamfering tool. You do the inside 
on the outside. Basically what this does is goes ahead and uh, makes a nice cone on the outside and the inside. So you go ahead and do that. And voila. So a second method of trimming the actual case length, instead of putting it actually in the actual hold, shell holder right here and running it through the case length gauge to the cutter trimmer, uh, I just like to actually pick it up and run it through here. Now I'm not going to get exact precise uh, measurement on the eggs, on the perfect size case, but you know what? I really don't give a damn. So if you <laughs> As long as you have it within somewhat of a tolerance, it's going to fire, it's going to shoot. Especially if it's a little bit lower, it's going to work okay for you. Um, not worry too much about the overexpansion of gases blowing past the actual casing. Um, I'm here for quickly producing brass and quickly producing bullets so that I can shoot them uh, downrange and not have to spend twice as much time preparing the cases. We can even do three at a time. The next step of this assembly line is to go ahead and remount the primer pocket of all the brass. Some of this brass is Lake City brass which has been crimped and we have to go ahead and ream it out and to do that we use a number two Phillips head bit on top of an electric drill this is a Harbor Freight drill uh, and setting it at medium speed and go ahead and locking it into place and go ahead and reaming all the prime pockets. So next step is going to go ahead and load up the actual safety prime system from Lee with the 223 primers from Tula and I found these to be pretty pretty cost effective and they're probably the most readily available primers on the market and cost the least uh, price per round so go ahead and uh, shake them into place and then after that you go ahead and lock over the cover tray once you lock over the cover tray you basically place it in to the safety prime system and there you go in order to get the correct amount of powder into each case I went ahead and set up my uh, powder measuring uh, device here and the powder I'm going to be using is IMR4895 and it's a pretty typical powder, all usable all the way from 308 all the way through uh, 556. So it's a pretty versatile powder, and uh, I've gotten pretty good loads off of it. I had to use the actual um, riser up on the uh, powder drop system, and so that's basically going to allow this to set up a little bit higher to allow two discs from the double disc kit and what I'm going to be using is the 0.82 cc size and the 0.88 cc size on top of each other in order to drop a, the proper amount of powder into each case and that should equal uh, somewhere between 23.1 and 23.3 grains of uh, powder from the IMR4895 into the 556 case. For this next step I'm going to go ahead and verify the powder, powder drop uh, weight of the actual uh, powder drop on the IMR4895 and so basically I got a I just primed this case right here I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate through the actual dies just as how I rotate through in a normal uh, loading sequence and I'm going to go ahead and charge this case right here I'm going to go ahead and weigh it now what I was looking for is anything between 23 
uh, grains all the way to uh, 23.3 grains and this is at 23.1.2 grains right here so I know that it's that's on target so I can go ahead and begin uh, loading the ammunition uh, basically to the exact same spec as uh, what I verified here I went ahead and did about five charges worth got the average just to make sure it uh, replicates results okay in the next step I want to go ahead and make sure that the bolt seating depth is at a proper um, length over here so I get the overall cartridge length that's proper for the uh, 556 cartridge so I'm going to go ahead and load up these 62 grain uh, 556 bullets I'm going to go ahead and load it up and once I do that I'm going to go ahead and verify with the um, actual calipers here just to make sure that the measurement's correct. I'm getting a measurement of 57.25 and the maximum overall cartridge length is 57.40. So I'm playing within spec here and should be able to load properly. Now that I've loaded the bullet up into the actual cartridge itself, have the powder in and everything, I want to go ahead and make sure I give this thing a good factory crimp, uh, which is the Lee factory crimp die right here. And basically just press it up into it. And it pinches up around the neck of the actual case. And it crimps it up pretty nicely, making sure that uh, this cartridge is good to go and it's going to load up properly and function properly. Now that I've gone through each one of the steps, I'm going to go ahead and go through the fluid process. Uh, I've already sized and uh, and reamed out the primer pocket so the last thing I'm going to do is just basically go through all these cases and uh, start loading up the ammunition. I'm going to go ahead and lock in the actual primer, put the primer into the case, load the powder, rotate it manually, place in the bullet, seat the bullet, and place in the factory crimp. Now that we've gone through the step-by-step -step process, I'm going to go ahead and go through fluid mo movements of each one. So I put a new round in, or a new case in here that has a ream primer pocket and it's fully sized and prepped. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it over to the sizing die just to load up a primer into the, uh, into the brass itself. And so I got the primer in there now. I'm going to go ahead and load up the powder place my 52 grain projectile in there with bolt, bolt seating die and then I'm going to go ahead and do a factory crimp. Voila. Go to the resizing die, load up a primer, seat the primer, transition, drop the powder, seat the bullet, place on the factory crimp. 